Twitch streaming is so easy. You just point the camera at yourself and you play video games and people throw money at you. How do I get money thrown at me, you ask? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly what you can do to become a successful Twitch streamer. And I'm going to have some help from this animated version of myself. Hello! I'm the animated version. <coughs> okay, let's get started. You all know how much I love making lists. I hate them. So we're going to do this in a list format. It's just easier that way. Number one, equipment. The obvious thing to do here is just start off by dumping a bunch of money into equipment because the nicer the equipment is, the better streamer you'll be. No, don't do that. That's stupid. Just use your PlayStation or Xbox camera because the content is what matters the most here. A $300 capture card is not going to make you a better streamer. Fixing your shitty attitude probably will though. Number two, have a stick. Why are people going to come to your channel to watch you? It's important to have a thing. Sure, your personality could be it, but would you be friends with you? To break it down into simple terms, there are two types of streamers. People who are really good at the game and people who are really funny. It's probably easier to just be really good at the game, so do that. Number three, have a schedule. People need to know when they're going to see you. So set yourself a schedule. Wait, <laughs> no, 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 you need to stream more than that. Well, I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to actually gain followers at a good rate, you're going to need to stream a lot. Every minute you're not online is years in Twitch time. Streamers who have achieved monetary success stream five to seven days a week, four to 12 hours a day. Four is on the low side. They usually do eight to 12. Four is if they're feeling a little ill that day. So you need to do that eight to 12 hours a day. But don't worry, you're playing video games. You love video games. Number four, play one game. Having a niche is the best way to gain followers quickly. So pick one game, make sure you love it, because you'll be playing it a lot. Sure, you could be a variety streamer, but a lot of those variety streamers started off by being part of a community, and they successfully broke out of it, which is no small task. So now that all of your followers are part of this game's community, you'll have to play this game through all of its glorious ups and downs. And when you're sick of it, too bad! Keep beating that horse, it's still moving, I see it! Number five! Be a girl! Unfortunately, <laughs> Unfortunately, just being a girl isn't enough. You need to be a hot girl with boobs. But even that's not enough. You need to show your boobs. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, dude. Woo! Number six, engage your audience. You can't just sit in silence and play your game. You have to be engaging. You need to be talking constantly as if you're a radio host that is also playing a video game. Just try saying shit off the top of your head. Well, maybe don't do that. Read the chat, how about that? That's very important. It helps keep your viewers engaged and hopefully they'll wanna keep coming back to hang out with you every time you stream. Some people are very good at reading the chat while they're playing a game. I am absolutely horrible. I read very slowly and I'm playing a game here. I'm trying to focus. Have you ever tried to text and drive at the same time? Of course you have. Don't lie to me. It's exactly like that, except you're not putting anyone's life in danger. Yeah, okay, you're good at texting and driving. You know, you're a real asshole, aren't you? Number seven, be an extrovert. Extroverts gain energy from the attention of others. A lot of people who play video games are not extroverts. They are introverts. They play video games to get away from people. Introverts expel energy when they have the attention of others. I am an introvert. Yeah, I film videos of myself all the time, but if there was like a camera crew around me, I'd probably freak the f out. For introverts, streaming is incredibly exhausting work. Having the attention of all these people for an extended period of time and trying to keep them all happy and entertained is brutal. And when you're just saying constantly, you tend to just say things that come off off the top of your head. So you're being super real with your audience. You're letting all these people into your life for extended periods of time, and it can just be too much sometimes. How's that sound? Does that make you uncomfortable? Number eight, 
drink water! You're gonna be talking for like eight hours, so make sure you've got water handy. Eight hours is a normal work shift, so you can do this. Except that when I'm at work, I dick around on the internet every couple of minutes or so and shoot the shit with my coworkers. Hell, when I'm playing games recreationally at home, I do so for like one to three hour stretches and I'm answering texts and checking Twitter and all that stuff. When you're streaming, your attention has to be 100% on the game that you're playing and 100% on your chat. But Bob, that's 200%. I know it is. I'm proving a point here. It takes a lot of concentration and focus. If you get up for a minute or two while you're streaming, you lose viewers. People tune in and see an empty chair. They just leave. Keep your pee breaks short and what were we talking? Oh yeah, drink a lot of water. Number nine, business stuff. So you want to make this a full-time gig, huh? Yeah, play video games for money, woo! Well, like I said earlier, you'll be streaming for five to seven days a week, four to 12 hours a day. So yeah, like a full-time job. Yes, even when you're building your following, but you already have a job. Well, you've got two options here. Come home every night and stream for four to 12 hours or quit your job. So now that you've quit your job, you've got to make some money. Well, you should have saved up a little bit before you left your job, but we'll make do. There's a few ways streamers get money. Donations, Twitch subscriptions, ad revenue, and sponsorships. For Twitch subscriptions and even ad revenue, you need to be an approved Twitch partner. And if you've just started building your following, they're not going to make you an approved Twitch partner yet. And sponsors want their product to get out to thousands of people. So unless you've got that kind of viewership, at first you're gonna be working off of donations. Let's say you grow followers rather quickly and you get approved by Twitch. Yay! Now you've got all that sub money. Not so fast. Let's say you get 100 subs your first month. That's a lot of subs. Twitch takes about two out of five dollars per sub. So that leaves you with a whopping 300 bucks for that month. Oh boy. But what about that ad revenue? Nope. Unless you've got hundreds of thousands of views per commercial, you're not getting dick. So to summarize, you're not making any money unless you've got a decent amount of viewers, convinced Twitch that you would be a worthy partner, and convinced sponsors that you can shill their product. So if you've quit your job to give yourself more time to build your audience, you'll be eating ramen for a few months. Ramen's good. And that whole convincing advertisers that you can shill their product is a full-time job in itself. That's why famous people have representatives. Number 10, just shut up and do it! With YouTube gaming, Twitch, and streaming support built into your consoles, the barrier to entry is so low. So just do it already. You'll only learn by doing. You have no excuses. And if you thought this is gonna be an easy way for you to make some cash, ha <laughs> ha! If it's so easy, then go ahead and give it a try. This video goes out to all of the people who thought playing video games on the internet for a living was easy. Take it from me, a man who has a whopping 200 Twitch followers and a schedule that's virtually non-existent. I stream once a week whenever the hell I feel like it because this is fucking hard and it sucks the life right out of me. But if you're actually serious about this stuff, check out Professor Broman's podcast, Streaming 101. There's so much good information there. Yes, it's very long, but if you're serious about this, you're going to need to put in some work, man. There's a reason why people get paid money to do this shit, because it's work. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Special shout out to the Geek Chic, of course, because she has basically been my streaming case study for the last year. Being close with her and watching her go through all of the ins and outs of streaming as a career gave me a lot of useful insight on the matter. So anyway, what do you guys think? Do you still think it's easy? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, all of this other social media garbage. And what do you think about this format? This format took a lot of work. I'm saying that before I even start editing because this is just the audio part. <laughs> But I know, I foresee it. I know I talked a lot about Twitch, but YouTube gaming, I wouldn't recommend starting your stream on YouTube gaming unless you already have a YouTube channel there. Also, our Wolf Den Live, which we do every single Wednesday at 9 o'clock p.m. That's easy as shit because I'm not playing a game and we're just there to talk to you guys. And we only do it for like 45 minutes. 
Simple as all hell. That's about the only way I could stream. Thank you guys very much. Have a good week. There are so many better guns out there now, I just don't know what any of them are. And now that your weapons actually affect your light level, something that Bungie assured everybody wasn't going to matter anymore, you are now forced to use whatever weapon you have that has the highest light level. Mega Man X is one of my favorite games of the time. And A Link to the Past is awesome. I'm playing through it right now on Twitch for the first time ever, and I really, really like it. And I don't even like any other Zelda games. So I'm giving all of these games that I missed out on a chance. And if you grew up with a Super Nintendo and not a Sega Genesis, I think you owe it to yourself to give all of these games a chance.